Alright, hi guys. Um gonna do a code along today. Um it's gonna be a few parts. Hopefully we can get it done in like three videos. Um so I'll do like one video each week. Um I'm gonna try and make it fun. I'm gonna try and like cut out all the all the boring bits for now. And just kind of do like a video game. So this game over here is Pong. Um it's not finished yet. I've just done a ball and one bat. Um, I've got the ball bouncing around the screen. There's no hit detection on the bat yet. Um, but what we're going to do is just going to go through and build the game. Obviously, go further than this. We'll get a working game. We'll learn some like fundamentals of game programming. We'll be using JavaScript inside a web browser so there'll be some html but we're, we're not so much learning html or javascript today we're just kind of learning some core concepts of programming um, and putting them into a video game um, i always find it helpful when i'm learning a new uh, programming language to build a simple game and just kind of learn how the code works and the syntax and things um, you will need a computer or a laptop. Um, you could probably do this on a t on a touch screen tablet thing, but they're not really made for it. So it, it's like brushing your hair with a toothbrush. You could probably do it, but it's going to take you ages, and it's it's not easy. So ideally, you want a computer. Um, JavaScript we can use inside the web browser so we don't need to get any special software for it. You will need a decent web browser, um, especially one that has developer tools. So um, if you look on the bottom of my web browser, I have a console open which is, you can find it on settings. So I'm using Chromium which is essentially the same thing as Google Chrome. If you click on the options, more tools, developer tools. Um, you can use the new version of Edge. Um, the old version of Edge, you're going to have problems with it. So the, the new version should look very similar to my browser because that's also, also built off the same thing as Google Chrome and Chromium. Um, Firefox has developer tools in it. Vivaldi, Opera and Brave are all other Chromium-based browsers, so they're kind of identical to Google Chrome and how they work. Um, it's quite easy to get hold of them. If you just do a Google search, um, download Google Chrome, and it's the first thing on the Google search. Um, we will need editors. You could if you're on Windows, you can just use Notepad, and there is an equivalent for Mac OS X. Um, you can use them, but I, I would advise if you look for Notepad++ if you're on Windows, or Sub Ether Edit for Mac OS X. If you're on a Chromebook, I'm not sure what software you'd use. I know there is editing software, so you just run a Google search and find out what can I edit HTML in on a Chromebook um, or YouTube will probably give you a quicker answer and show you how to install Notepad++. You can use Notepad on Windows. Like I say, there's not going to be syntax highlighting, so it's going to be hard to kind of look through your code and find mistakes. Um, and if you do use Notepad, make sure you take it off of rich text and put it on plain text I think that's the right way around whichever it's already set on to start with put it on the other one if you're going to do editing for code um, but I really do suggest getting notepad plus plus which is it's the same program just with some extra things put in um, for syntax highlighting as I say it helps you find errors sub ether edit for mac os x um, that's easy you just go on to the app store on your computer, type in sub ether edit, it'll come up, it's completely free, it only takes a second to install. Um, for Notepad++, again just a quick Google search for Notepad++, 
and it's the first one it even says downloads notepad plus plus I can't take you just get the newest version I can't take you through the whole installation process because I'm, I'm using Linux um, if you are using Linux or Raspberry Pi um, you've got loads of editing stuff on there um, I, I suggest Genie for Raspberry Pi users um, is that that's like kind of built for it um, yeah Genie um, if you're not on Raspberry Pi you can install Genie on a Linux machine but there will already be an editor I'm using mousepad here um, there's loads of them G edit Kate there's tons um, yeah like I said I can't take through the installation process so if you want to pause the video just get those two things on your computer the relevant web browser and the relevant um, text editor and then yeah we can start okay I assume you paused it and you're back and you're ready alright so let's start get rid of that and I'll well, we'll leave that on the screen for now okay so to start off with we just got to put some stuff into it it just basically tells the web browser what we're doing um, so if you imagine we're just typing a load of instructions for the for the uh, web browser to kind of process and then it would kind of take those and go oh this is what you want me to do and then we'll end up with this um, we'll end up with a game so first thing we need to tell it what document type we're using we're using HTML um, if you're in your text editor and you got one of the ones I suggested um, the way you get to it would be different depending on what one you're using um, but you can go to document and then tell it which type of language you're using so for me it's file type and we're going to use HTML which is a markup language and there we go it's changed color that means the syntax highlighting highlighting is on um, so just carry on putting the boilerplate HTML in um, so these these first bits I'm, I'm not going to go into detail what they are they just help the help the browser figure out what it's doing um, hopefully you're finding your arrows and your slashes on your keyboard okay um, and all right we're inside the head tag now again this is just like really boring stuff um, I am doing a coding club on Mondays at 5 um, so if anyone wants to learn more about what all this stuff is learn learn some coding in some more detail also I'll be there to answer any questions and help with anything that you're stuck on you can just kind of join that by emailing or messaging us on Facebook or Instagram um, so the email is kimberskatepark at gmail.com I'll leave that in the description of this video if I remember um, I'm just going to zoom out so you can see all that because you kind of want all that in. So meta content equals blah 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 and then we close that with another pointy arrow thing. I don't know what the proper name is for those. I just call them pointy arrows. Uh, so we'll be mostly using brackets, pointy arrows, curly brackets. So hopefully you know your way around the keyboard. just telling browser what kind of uh, encoding language we're using I don't really understand these bits myself that well to be completely honest but you don't need to you just need to know where to put them in all right so we're going to create a title and what the title is going to do is going to kind of in the tab on the browser it's going to uh, 
tell it's going to tell the web browser what we want written up there so i'm going to just write pong um hopefully you know pong um if you don't then look it up because it's one of the most important games of all time it's quite easy to code so it's a nice kind of introduction every time i'm learning a language i'll often write pong in that language just to figure out how it's different from what i know all right so we've written ahead that's just kind of helping the uh browser know what what on earth's happening what are you doing here um we've created a body um Again, it's HTML, we're not worried about that today. We're just kind of concentrating on the JavaScript. But what we will do now, um, you could go file, save, but I, I suggest learning your shortcuts for coding. It, it makes things a lot quicker. So if you're on Windows, it's Control S. If you're on Mac, Command S. Um, and I've made a folder called Pong, and we're going to we're going to save this as pong.html and it's important that you put the .html extension in there or else it's probably not going to work on the browser so click save if you hadn't already set up the syntax highlight and hopefully saving it as html will have caused it to kind of set up its colors so i'm going to close that old one and in a new tab on my browser shortcut again control o if you're on mac it's command o that's the shortcut for open and find your folder where you save pong.html click on it click open now there's nothing on the screen yet we haven't put anything there um, but if everything's working okay the tab up the top should say pong all right next thing we've got to do um, we are working in javascript so we need to give the browser somewhere to put that javascript oh, excuse me so we're going to make a canvas tag so if you imagine an artist paints on a blank canvas um we're making art here we're telling that this is where we're putting our art we want it on the canvas um so we're going to type give it an id so id equals game canvas that's just so the JavaScript that we write knows where to find it. Zoom in a bit so you can read it better. And we need to tell it how wide and how high we want it. And we just go 800, 600. Make sure that's inside the quotation marks. And that's that bit done. All right, so Control S to save. And we can hit in the browser Control R. Again, Command if you're on Mac, nothing there, that's fine, we haven't put anything in the canvas yet. Alright, so that's kind of all our HTML done, we just need to do one more HTML tag which is called script and this is um, this is where the, the web browser will go and look for the JavaScript. So um, HTML is a markup language, it's just kind of like this is how I want my my words and my pictures laid out. JavaScript's like more of a proper programming language, so um, people that work in game development, not necessarily JavaScript, so you do get JavaScript games, um, most of them will work with C++ or C Sharp, and the syntax is like very similar, and the way we'll be making the game work is pretty much, um, it's pretty much the same as in any like proper programming language. Uh, syntax is sometimes slightly different, but you can kind of take the concepts here, and if you know the syntax, you could write it in C, C Sharp or C++. Okay, all right, so now we've got somewhere for our canvas to go. We've also got somewhere for the web browser to look for what to put in the canvas. I'm just going to open this up a little bit. Um, we do need to do one more thing, which is going to be like, oh, what on earth are we doing? And then we can get onto the bits. This is just like a kind of special function built into JavaScript that helps the uh, canvas work and also tells it, don't just run the code once, run it over and over. 
So window dot onload equals function, open close brackets, and then open close curly brackets, and then we're going to put our code inside of the curly brackets. And for now, we're just going to start with console dot log, and inside quotation marks, hello world. I'm going to put an explanation mark just because I want to. Um, so if, if you've done coding before, this is the first thing you always do. Always, um, it's, it's just a thing for coders. Um, you're kind of waking up the computer and giving it like the ability to think. So we, we do, we make it say hello world first. So you're gonna open up your developer tools, go to console. Um, mine's really zoomed in, just so you can read it. And now if we refresh that, hopefully, in the browser it will print hello world so we can change this to anything we want and if we refresh the page anything we type in the console log will get printed in the console all right so um, the page is working the javascript's working next thing uh, let's start building our canvas so first we need to tell the javascript where to find the canvas inside the um, html we wrote so i'm going to say canvas equals document dot get element by pay attention to my upper and lowercase letters here um, otherwise it's not going to work and i put a semicolon at the end that just tells javascript that's the end of this line i could have done one there it will still work without the semicolons but it's good practice to put them there so inside quotation marks or apostrophe is either one, just so long as it's two of the same. We're going to tell it, look for the uh, HTML element with the ID called Game Canvas. And that's where we want the JavaScript to go. Um, we just need to put one more line in as well just to tell it we're working with 2D graphics. Uh, canvas context equals canvas dot get context open close bracket semicolon and 2d lowercase d all right um, we don't want it to just happen once so I'm going to set up a frames per seconds variable so VAR and FPS you can change FPS to anything you want so this is going to be frames per second but that's kind of long so FPS is fine we wrote it so we know what it means frames per seconds 30 will be sufficient for most computers so even if you've got a weak computer like this kind of coding will work on pretty much anything so we've kind of set up the variable for frames per second and now I'm just going to write an update all command and 1000 milliseconds is a second and we're going to divide that by frames per second so that's going to give us 30 frames every second all right so that's our window on load function now we could save it and refresh it it's probably going to throw an error yep um as we just told it there's the canvas go get the canvas and then every 30 30 every 30th of a second run the update all function we've not written the update all function yet so let's write that quickly so function update all open close brackets open close curly brackets and just send the brackets down so we've got somewhere to type our function and you can see every time I open up a new level I'm indenting further in if your editors not doing it on its own then I, I advise mimic my formatting it will help it help you find errors later on um, so control save and refresh the web browser so the errors gone there's still nothing showing up in the canvas yet so we've put the canvas there we've said update it every 30 seconds with the update all function but our update all is empty 
Um, so when you're doing a game, there's two main things you normally want to think about. There's more, but um, there's two main things that will happen in pretty much all games. So there'll be move all, and we'll also have draw all. So you've got draw it, and then after each frame, move it. Okay, so we have those inside the update all function. We can call those two functions. Let's draw first and then move. Draw all, move all. I'm just going to, I've just realized my face is in the way of the code. There you go. Now you can see what I've typed. Um, if I'm going too fast for anyone, don't forget, if you hit that cog in the bottom right corner of the YouTube video, you can set the speed to slower. If I'm going too slow, you can make it faster. You've got a pause button there as well. Again, if anyone did want to join the coding club, there's, um, we'd be in a Zoom call together. So you can stop me and say, hey, you're going too fast. What does this mean? And I can help you. All right. Um, so we're calling those two functions now. I forgot my semicolon. I'm just going to worry about draw for now because we can't move anything if we haven't drawn it yet. Um, first thing we should do is the background. So uh, first we need to tell it what color we want to do. So canvas, context, and these are just some built-in JavaScript functions that will help us draw. And inside quotation marks, you're going to hit hash key, which on a Mac should be option and free. Um, it should be the should be a key near your quotation marks on a Windows keyboard. Um, so hash and zero 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 zero. That's that is the color black in hex numbering. Um, so we've told it what color. Let's tell it to draw a rectangle. Canvas context dot fill rect. Open close bracket semicolon and what we're going to have here is the start x. Um, if you've done graphs at school, this would kind of be familiar. Start y, end x, and end y. So we want. Uh, the start and x point to be zero because we want this to fill the entire canvas. Y zero as well. And we want it to fill the whole screen. We could do, um, what was it, 600, 800. But if we decide to change the size of the canvas, that's not going to work. So what we're going to do, we're going to take canvas.width and canvas.height. So that will just kind of tell the JavaScript, go check the size of the canvas, and that's how big we want it to be. So uh, control save, and then control R in the browser to refresh. And something doesn't look right. I think I put my height in wrong. Yeah, I misspelled height. So if I save that correctly, refresh, there we go, that looks correct. That's about the shape and size of a TV screen. Um, so we're on the right track. We've got our canvas. Um, what next? Well, we want we, the game pong is basically tennis. So we want a ball. Um, let's get the ball done first. All right. So the ball is going to be the same as the background here. Uh, the ball's going to be a rectangle. Same again. Um, so rather than writing this code out a second time for a ball, because we're going to also use a rectangle for the bats, um, it'll just make our lives a lot easier. If we make a function called uh, draw rect, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll call it color rect. Um, and this function is going to take arguments. Um, 
we'll worry about that in a moment. All right, let's open up the function and tab in. And what we're going to do, we're going to highlight the code that we just wrote to draw the background. And we're going to Control X or Command X on a Mac, and then Control slash Command V into the color rack. All right, so now we have a function drawing um, a rectangle for us. Um, so if we save this, go in here, there's nothing there. Um, the way we fix that, because we, we're calling update all, and then we're calling draw all, and in draw all, we're not calling anything, so there's nothing getting that color rect function. So to use uh, the color rectangle function, we we'll type color rect, and Control S in the browser. Control R. There we go. Our guy's back again. There's our background. Now, when we draw the ball, we don't want the ball to be the same size as this. So we're going to have to tell it like we want different sizes sometimes. So inside the brackets for the um, color rectangle function just write start x comma start y comma end x comma end y comma and you can see I'm kind of I you can put spaces in between them I bunch them together so if it's two starts and two ends uh, it just kind of helps me read but you can do it any way you want um, with the spaces you can't just enter enter and things like that. Um, I'm also going to put an argument for colour in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it for the uh, background I want these arguments in so for start x we had 0, start y was 0 and then it was canvas dot width canvas dot height and the color has to be a string it was hashtag zero 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 in explanation mark so it's six zeros and that's the color black what I'm also going to do is put a line above that and um, I'm going to do slash slash and that basically just puts a comment in the code so it's something we can read but the uh, computer won't and that's just for our own reference so this is going to be draw background might just help us kind of see what codes doing what later all right so now um, still not gonna work well it will but it won't work properly we need to change that to color so instead of black that is now the color argument that we passed in over here um, and that is going to be star X star Y uh, and x and y right, so if we save that, if I've done everything right it should still look the same, no we've got an error here so I've done something wrong uh, canvas is not defined, line 36 so what's happening on line 36 I'd misspelled canvas. There you go. Um, so you can kind of see you do things wrong all the time in coding. Um, if if you want to get into it properly, learn what the errors mean. It takes a while. You've got to make a lot of mistakes to learn learn what each error means. Um, but the quicker you learn them, the quicker you can fix your mistakes. All right. So. Now hopefully your code's working too. If it's not, pause, go back, make sure your code matches mine. Um, now we've got to draw a ball. Draw a ball. And we're using the same function as the background. Um, and I'm gonna put it, so with the X and Y, if you've done a graphs and charts at school, X goes along that's the same encoding so x is horizontal 
and in, in graphs and charts zero on the y-axis is at the bottom and the higher the number the higher up you go um, it's not like that for coding you got to think of it more like uh, reading a book so x is the rows and y is the line so x is like each character in a sentence each letter in a sentence and then y is each line so um, we've got I think 600 lines down available here so let's start off with x at 50 and y at 200 and we want to make it 10 wide yeah 10 wide right, let's do 20 the ball will be too small otherwise and for color we're going to make it white and that will be ff 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 that's the complete opposite end of the thing. There you go. Alright, so uh, maybe I should change these. N index is misleading. So I'm, I'm going to change them to width and height. Because we're not really saying where it ends, we're saying how high and wide we want. Oh, width, height. There we go. It's good to make all your um, all your names for things like descriptive of what they actually are. It helps you kind of figure out what's going wrong later. All right, so I've done something wrong. Always misspelling height. I before e. There we go. It's fixed again. All right, so that's the ball. All right, now we've got a ball. We can start working on. Um, the other set of functions which is the movement functions so what's happening here on the web browser it's not drawing this background and then drawing this little dot once it's actually we, we've told it to keep doing it over and over which is that's essentially a game loop um, so every time it draws it it then draws the background over the ball and draws the ball over the background again and again and again and again and we can use that to make it look like it's moving um, so inside our move all function rather than just put the code for moving the ball straight in here because we're going to have to move the bats later as well move the paddles we're going to say move ball um, so we're calling that function uh, the function doesn't exist yet so let's make it function move ball alright now we've given it a set point here so we need to change that for it to look like it's moving so the same way as here where we've kind of created variables uh, we've, we've kind of said these are the arguments these are what we want you to apply to it uh, we're going to make some variables and typically you put these at the top of your code so we're going to say there that's a variable so just as a quick explanation you have two types of um, variables two types of data um, in JavaScript you'll have uh, changeable data which is there and then there's let uh, we don't really need let in this so we'll call that there as well um, and they are the types of data that you expect to change so what did we have we had 50 for x, 200 for y, 50, 200. And the other type you have is constants, which is a constant, it's something that's not going to change. So we want x and y to change so the ball can move. <coughs> but we want the ball to always stay the same size. Um, so we use um, underscore casing for constants typically you, you don't have to format it the same it will still work 
you use camel casing, which is every time there's a new word, you do a capital for variables. Um, that's just kind of like the way you write JavaScript. It, it will work if you don't. It just helps people read it. So we made the ball 20 wide and 20 high. Um, right, so we've made variables for the ball. Let's put the variables for the ball in. Uh, so here where we're drawing the ball, ball x, ball y, and then it's the same height as it is wide, so we can put ball size in twice. And if we control save that and then refresh, nothing's changed, that's good. Um, if there is an error, again, go back over the code, just check yours matches mine. Uh, pause and rewind where you need to to make sure it all matches. Uh, we're not too far in at the moment, but there's going to be quite a lot of code later. All right, so now we've created a variable for the ball's x position. So to move the ball, we can say ball x is equal to ball x plus 1. So what that's going to do, um, every time the the function runs, every time the function runs, oh, let me turn my WhatsApp off. There we go. Every time the function runs, it's going to look at what ball X is now. So currently it's 50, and we're telling it, um so here forget forget what ball x is just add one to the old ball x and now ball x equals that so as time goes um x is going to go up and up and up so what we should see now if we control save and control refresh the ball is starting to move across the screen very slowly snail pace um, while that kind of makes its way over, we can mess around with the Y coordinate as well, so ball Y. Um, this is the shorthand way of writing the same, the, These both these lines are exactly the same. Uh, that's just the shorthand way of writing it. So plus plus, if you remember, Y starts at the top and goes down, so we should see the ball go down from this. So if we refresh, now we've got the ball moving in two different directions at the same time. Um, right, that's not really fast enough. So let's try another shorthand expression. So we could write ball x plus uh, 7 sounds like a good one. Refresh that. Yeah, I think that's kind of how fast we want the ball to start off with. We'll, let, we'll make it go faster later. The shorthand way of writing that would be plus equals seven. They're both the exact same line of code. This one's a quicker way of writing it. There we go, it's gone. All right. Um, we want the ball speed to change during play. So if you hit on a certain part of the bat, um, it gets harder for your opponent. Um, so rather than give it a static number, we'll do what we've done for X and Y. And we'll say their ball x speed equals 7, their ball y speed equals 7. When we come back down to move ball, we can say ball x plus equals ball x speed. So that's just adding um, the number onto its coordinate like before and then ball y ball y speed control save control refresh there we go flies off the screen perfect all right we don't want it to fly off the screen uh what we actually want we want it to bounce around um balls bounce so now we need to create some logic for that um this is when we start getting into like the meat and potatoes of 
writing games. Um, so we need to tell the ball when it hits that edge of the screen, go back the other way. Um, so there it, we want it to bounce. Right, we do that using what's called an if statement. So we'll say if open close brackets and then the curly bracket. So it's quite similar to a function. Now we have to say if this condition is true. Um, what condition would it be? It would be the ball's y coordinate um, if that is greater than. So that's an arrow um, pointing towards it. If ball y is greater than canvas dot height, in that situation, I would like you to go the other way. So if seven is making it go down, and then to go up, we'd need to make that minus seven. Um, so ball speed y and we would need to say ball speed y equals ball speed y times minus one. So seven times minus one is minus seven, right? Um, again, we can use shorthand for that. So times equals, we're using asterisk for times, that is shift eight. So if we save that now and then refresh the browser, there's an error. Line 48. Mm. Okay, I found it. Um, that was a stupid mistake. I wrote ball speed Y, it's ball Y speed. Control save, control refresh. There we go, it bounced. But we've only set up bounce for this bottom wall, so let's set up bouncing for the other walls. Um, so what's the next one? Uh, next one's the far wall, so that is the X coordinate. So if ball X is greater than canvas dot width, uh, open close curly brackets same again but ball x speed times equals minus one so that should set up the next wall refresh right right then we need to set up those top walls so the next one that's hitting is the one up there rather than write a new one because uh, we want the same thing to happen we want uh, ball speed to times itself by minus one. I'm gonna say here, these two lines, which is shift backslash, and it's two uh, vertical lines is the statement for or. So we're gonna say if ball y is greater than the canvas height, uh, or if it is less than zero, so ball y is less than zero, then bounce in both those situations there we go brilliant um, right the reason we're using greater than uh, rather than equal to so there's equal to it took me a while to figure this out um, if I change the ball y speed to 5 this should work no problem at all but basically saying when ball wise coordinate is equal to what's the height 600 then bounce back now if you're going in multiples of five it will equal 500 eventually it will also equal zero but if we change that speed back to seven i don't think seven multiplies to that number so there you go um, it's gone because it never it never meets the condition 
we'll change that back to greater than and less than and we also want to do the same thing for the x coordinate again so ball x is less than zero refresh and now we should have a forever bouncing ball okay so our balls bouncing around the screen over and over and over uh, if we pay attention to when it hits the far sides you can see it goes off screen a little bit so the x coordinate for the ball is starting at the top left corner just like the background so it's only checking that for the top left corner which when it hits zero it will bounce off the edge correctly but when it goes down here it goes just off screen and then bounces the way we fix that uh, where we're saying if ball y is greater than canvas height we can just subtract the ball size from that if we do that for x and y ball size um, so now our code is starting to get a bit more complex there we go now it looks like it's hitting the sides on the bottom and far end rather than going out of view All Right, so that's our ball done for now um, next thing we're going to draw is some paddles so if we come back down to our draw function I'm just going to put a new line in after the draw ball and in fact I'm going to space this out just so it's easier for people to read um, all right, another comment next thing we're going to do is draw paddle 1 so it's not squash it's tennis so there's going to be two paddles um, so we're going to put a, another color rectangle function in there uh, but we need to give it some variables to work with so if we come back to the top um, underneath our ball variables we could do var paddle 1 x or paddle x 1 paddle 1 x um, I'll put that at and the paddle one y and we start it at 200 that sounds good and there are variables um, we could make x a constant but we're just really that as it is for now um, we'll make the paddle width both paddles are going to be the same size we don't need to put the number one in there so paddle width will make that 20 yeah same same width as the ball const paddle height uh, 100 let's go 50 100 sounds like it might be big all right so we've given it the variables that we need um, we come back down to the draw function we're going to draw the paddle so rather than type it over and over and over again um, we could just copy this line from the ball so control C or command C control V um, and then we just need to change these variables so I think it's paddle 1 X Paddle one Y Paddle Width and Paddle Height and we want it the same colour as the ball so we we'll keep that as white. We'll zoom out a bit, hopefully it doesn't get too small to read. Control save, control refresh paddle width is not defined so I've typed something wrong when I've called my variables up here paddle width paddle width is it wrong though? is that any error? yeah 71 oh 
stupid me. I put the first part of it in lowercase. So now if I save that and refresh that, there we go, there's a paddle. And 50 is small, I'm gonna put it back up to 100. So control save, control refresh. There we go, that looks more like a paddle. All right, but the paddle's not doing anything yet, it's just sitting there. Um, next thing we need to do is we need to give ourselves a way to control it. Um, the way we're going to do that, we will use keys. Um, you could do it with a mouse. I, I prefer keyboard. Um, all right, so we've got to do some other special JavaScript stuff again. Um, so before the window on load function, let's just create a function for key pressed and the way computer keyboards work, we're going to want a key released function as well or else it just won't work properly. Um, we need to add event listeners because <coughs> we could write a function but unless the JavaScript has been told to listen to listen for it then it doesn't know so inside your window dot onload function at the bottom I'm gonna write document dot add event listener and that's just basically gonna tell it listen out for the keyboards um, so listen for a key down and then when you hear the key key down use our key press function that we're going to write um, document dot add event listener uh, key up so when you hear that a key has been released run our key released function all right um, we need to tell we need to pass an argument into the key pressed and key release function and it's just going to be the event um, we get to choose what that's called we could change it to e if we want but we'll call it event uh, when you hear the event um, we're just going to use a console.log for now um, and in fact I'm going to comment out this console log we wrote earlier uh, so two slashes to comment that out um, for the console log we're going to say oh, don't forget to say colon key pressed colon space and then we're going to do plus EVT, which is what we're passing in over here, the event that it's heard, and we're going to ask it that event that you heard, what was the key code for that event, and we're going to do the same down here console.log and key released plus the event's key code. So control save and then in the browser control refresh. I've done syntax wrong somewhere, apparently line 30. I can't see my mistake. Give me a moment, I'll try and figure this out. Okay, I've realized what I've done. I've written two functions and not told the code that they're functions. There we go. So if you're following with me, you probably made the same mistake. We fixed it now. So control save, control refresh. There we go. And even it's if you look at my console log down here, it caught my control R being released. All right. So what keys we're going to use? I'm going to use up and down. Uh, if you do computer gaming, you might prefer W and S. Um, steps are the same just you change the key codes I'm going to use up and down so if I press up uh, the key pressed is 38 and when I let go key released 38 down is 40 so up 38 down 40 alright so 
let's keep track of those on our variables. We're going to say, because it never changes, const key up equals, what was it again? 40. Nope. Oh, I'm on the wrong part. Key up was 38. Uh, const key down equals 40. All right, so uh, now we've got the key codes. So we comment out these console logs. We don't need them anymore. And we're going to say if key up so that's basically saying if key up is true um, let's do that actually if key up equals true no let's say this isn't right uh, sorry that's um, completely wrong if EVT sorry if if the event dot key code is equal to key up, um, what do we want to happen in that case? Uh, we want paddle one y to be minus equals uh, ten. Then that's a good speed. Let's just test that for now. Control refresh. There we go. Alright, you can see it only moves up a go at a time. Um, that's not how we want it to move. That's because for each key code, each time that key is pressed, it will just send it up 10. That's all it will do. Uh, Alright, so what? What? how do we fix this? Um, the way we fix this is we create a boolean value which is a true or false value um, so paddle one up equals oh we want it to start as false uh, let's do the same for down paddle one down equals false so a boolean value can only be true or false. Yeah, we still use var variable, um, just the way JavaScript's written. Other languages, you'd have to write, for example, int or bool for boolean or str for strings of like letters. But we can just get away with var and const in JavaScript. All right, so if key code if evt dot key code equals key up then rather than moving the paddle we're gonna change the paddle one up to true and we want one for down as well so if uh, evt dot key code equals key down then we want paddle one down to equals true um, we'll do key release in a moment so that should all be good there. If we come down to the move all function, so in the move all we've got a move ball. Let's put a move paddle one in there. Move. Again, to call the function we need to write the function. So we're calling it but it doesn't exist yet so let's write it. Function move paddle one and we're going to say if paddle one up is true i don't think we need to write as true we can change it if we do 
Um, I think that should just work. Actually, let's do that just in case there's any other errors that come up. If paddle one up equals true, then paddle one y is that correct? Paddle one y, yep. Then paddle one y minus equals ten. All right. Control save. Control refresh. There we go. It sent it up. We haven't told it to listen out for the key released in terms of paddle movement though, so um, let's quickly do one for the down state as well. If actually before we do that we can test to see if we need true there. Because I think if you asking if paddle one up, you're asking is this true? So let's refresh. Yeah that works. Right, so we could do the same for paddle down. If Paddle one down, open close curly brackets, then paddle one y, and to go down it's plus. So refresh that. Now down's working as well, but if we do up and down, we haven't hit key release yet, so uh, both of those things happen and they never undo. Um, so right now, up is true and down is true so it's moving down at 10 and it's moving up at 10 and 10 minus 10 is 0 so it ends up staying still we'll use that um, for something later alright so we need to put the key released calls in so if event in fact we can just copy and paste these lines from the key press function control C Control V again command if you're on Mac and all that we need to be different is instead of true we're calling false now if we save that refresh that awesome look at that up and down the back does go off the screen and um, we will fix that but for now I think that's a good point to stop the video next week what we'll do um, we'll tell the bat stop moving when you hit the edge of the screen don't go past the edge we'll add hit detection so that if you get the ball with your bat it bounces and if you don't it's going to go off screen and give a point to the opposite player um, we will put a second paddle in at some point and create some um, AI um, so that we can play against the computer um, yeah so if, if you enjoyed that um i'll put the i'll put more up next week so we'll carry on with this game if you want to learn coding in a bit more depth um feel free to email us or message us on our social media um the club's currently run on mondays at five uh, but if they don't work let us know and if a lot of people would prefer a different day we can always change the day around